present, uh, but today I am the moderator and diehard fan of Halloween 2. Uh, first panel we had, only 15 minutes late, not bad. Uh, who else paid $20 for parking? <laughs> I understand so that. Uh, who else got locked for 10 minutes in between these rooms? Okay. Uh, so, there are, I have no idea who's here, but it's a lot of people from Halloween 2. So whoever wants to sit can sit, and we'll pass the mic along, I guess. I hope these will go smoothly throughout the day. Uh, in the Blu-ray versions and 
more multiple versions that they have. It's a great experience. It was actually the only motion picture I did as a kid. Um, did a lot of different things growing up. I had the pleasure of being a, a young actor in Hollywood. And young Michael Myers seems to be like the most popular thing I ever did, so it's pretty cool. And <laughs> really, really appreciate it to be here. Thank you so much for all of you coming out. And, uh, it's just great. It's an awesome experience. Fantastic. Out of Ty Mitchell, uh, I played young Gary. Uh, in 1981, I just recently uh, wrapped shooting The Fog with John Carpenter. Uh, and uh, so, uh, John gave me the opportunity to do this kind of cameo thing in Halloween 2. And, uh, you know, as a young kid, I didn't realize what I was part of at the time. But, uh, you know, seeing all you guys and meeting everybody and all the, all the fans of the, the, you know, the following of the movies and horror films, especially Halloween. Uh, it, it's it's a it's a great honor to have been a part of that and, and look back on those fond memories and, and you know everybody looks the same or just a little bit grayer I think but you know uh, <laughs> no we're still there um, but uh, I do want to thank you all for coming out and, and uh, it's a great honor to be here thank you.
And the exciting thing is to be up on stage with all of these people that I've known forever. Most of us were in an acting class together that was extraordinarily talented and wonderful. And uh, we all worked together on so many things in, in classes and then got to do this together. So that's uh, exciting. So Halloween 2 is my first film as a director, and um, I was uh, both wet behind the ears and uh, full of piss and vinegar, and thought I knew a lot, and knew some, and didn't know everything. Uh, and people think that Nancy Stevens and I met um, on Halloween 2, but actually we had been together way before that. Um, so that's just a little uh, uh, small fact. Um, it's interesting because as difficult as it is for your first film, I think I had the presence of mind to surround myself with actors that I knew uh, would come through because we had all studied together, and not all of us, but a uh, big part of us had all worked together before, and it made my life so much easier because there was such easy communication. And what's interesting is I think that. Um, not only did the film have a long, does the film have a longevity as, as witnessed by all of you being here, but we all still, as, as, as actors, um, we're still in touch. And uh, there's a camaraderie of, that develops on any film to a degree, but th this group of uh, actors has been extraordinary in keeping in touch, and, uh, and, it's, and it's gone into the next generation. Um, Lance just worked with my daughter as a director, and uh, uh, it, it, it's just, um, and at least his daughter came for me a couple of years ago. I mean, it's just such a such an interesting group of people. And Gloria Giffords taught two generations of, of uh, actors that we passed along. Uh, so, as well as the film, you know, which is a film experience, there's also the human experience, and, and this was a really Yeah, I did. I was like, 
Ah. So uh, that was the beginning of it. And it, you know, it didn't really coalesce into what it became for like 20 years or something. And so it didn't really help my career. Nobody ever said, wow, how do we do with you? Nothing. Nothing. Until now, when I could actually appreciate it. <laughs> so thank you all for being such a supportive film. Um, and me, and uh, just got to know that we all appreciate you so much. And can't believe that you love us, because we love you. Mm -hmm. So, my story is not like any of theirs. And you know why? Because I'm the only black woman that ever got to star in one of these movies Woo! before Tyler Banks. Yeah. Yes, we were all in acting class together, but we all had to audition. And the part that was written, that I played, was written, it actually said the script, 55 year old white haired lady. Yeah, and Rick, being the genius that he is, and he has changed my life three times already, but that time he said, I think Lori is authoritative enough to do this role. And I came in, I met Deborah, she said, well, I think she's too young. He said, uh, well, you know, we'll get the other nurses, and we'll see, and maybe she'll be a little older, and she'll be able to do it. And he made it happen. I got it, I went into hair and makeup the first day, and they said, oh, what role are you playing? And I said, this is Alps. And they said, no, no, because they had the script, and it hadn't been changed. And they didn't understand what the hell I was doing there. And I said, uh, no, this is definitely, you know, I am definitely playing this part. Um, how could Rick Rosenthal have known that, yes, not only was I authoritative then, <laughs> In 81, they knew this? No, only Rick knew it. Um, and um, I had already started a big motion picture for uh, California Suite, and I played Richard Pryor's wife, and I thought, well, I'm doing this little horror movie, just like Tom, you know? Like, and uh, it's gonna be completely, and it's, look at this, 40 years later, we are all here together, and it's one of the most exciting things uh, that we're, that all of us are known for, even though we've done tons of things. And, and always, it's, I have to say, it was Rick. He was smart. He was so smart to bring us in, to make sure that we auditioned, to make sure we got a, a, a shot at being around him and with him. And, um, and I love the shoot. And, um, and it's always been wonderful. So I thank everybody, but mostly. And then Dean Cundy, you know, a great cinematographer. He did make me look good again in DC Cat. Thank you, Dean. Um, but, but I thank Rick, I thank Rick, I thank Rick. Thank you. Well, uh, I have to echo everything everyone has said, except that I wasn't in that acting class. I was in a lot of other acting classes, but not that one. Dean, wow. Every time I see that film, I can't help but think how amazingly it was shot. It was so beautiful. The crackling of the green leaves at night, you could hear it, and the way Rick directed it, it just comes to life, which is, I think, one of the reasons it stood up today. It's just magical. To me, it's still magical. Um, when I got the role, I had been doing just a lot of television, you know, the Magnum P.I. pilot and the Night Rider pilot. I had a lot of Glenn Art Larson shows, and I really hadn't done the film. So my agents sent me on this audition, and I, unlike Tommy, <laughs> said, well, absolutely not, I would never do it again. <laughs> so somehow or other, I ended up with this role, and I guess somehow it turned out okay. But I had never seen the original Halloween. So Deborah and Rick set up screening for me so I could see what, what the movie was all about. And I really still didn't have an appreciation for exactly, as, as you said, what the genre was at that time. But Rick had a way. Um, as a director of bringing your characters to life, he brought my character to life. 
There wasn't a tremendous amount there compared to other things I had done on TV. But what he did, he gave her a nuance and he gave her a personality and he gave her a dimension that I don't think was on the pages at all. And we were talking about it earlier. I am so grateful to him for that. Um, I don't think all of it ended up in the movie, but it was there and it was in the subtext. And just working with these people was amazing. And what they said to, to realize that you're all here um, at this time in our lives is just really, it's lovely. And, and I too am very, very grateful. And I'm grateful for everyone who's here. I've known Nancy since the days of doing commercials when we were very young. I you know, I did Buck Rogers with Amelisha. I mean, our lives have actually sort of, there's been a syn synchronicity to them um, from time to time. And of course, Dick Warlock, who in my opinion, is the best shape ever.
So I said, okay, so I'm working on the home. I'm seeing empty offices, and then I found one with a mask on that desk. So I put the mask, put the mask on, and I walked over to the door, and I stood there and looked at him. <laughs> he said, who are you? No, you spoke to him. He said, who the hell are you? Probably so left and took the mask off. Do you remember that? <laughs> That's good. But tell me the story. <laughs> so well. Anyway, we went in. We had our meeting, and as I was leaving, I turned around. I said, "Is there any reason I can't play this song?" I played, and, she, and uh, he says, "No, I don't care if Deborah does it." So I walked back down to Deborah's office, and she said, "I don't care." So we're not going to do another movie with that character. So thank you, fine. We're using midgets. <laughs> anyway, so I got to work with all these guys. Dean. Okay. And then Billy. Huh? I got all of them. You did. You did. You're the only one I didn't get to. I just went to the, you know, who was going to take me there? <laughs> <laughs> with that, I'll turn it over to Bill Ross. So, um, you know, acting workshop, working with Rick in the workshop, you know, and we had a little short game. And when Rick would give you this little half-assed smile and tilt his head, that meant he didn't believe it, and it sucked. And you just started to know that. And then, can we do it again? Okay. Um, now, this is, you heard how Rick fought for everybody? I actually was positive I was not going to get this film because word got back to me that the producer said, he's East Coast, he's too East Coast, this is the Midwest. I said, well, that's good night, Irene. But, first movie, he showed the Lions Club. And I got it, and you guys are all here. And uh, this is like a reunion for us. It really is. And um, oh, Bernadette from Northern Canada. Right there? You left your signed autograph over at the thing. Okay. <laughs> all right, uh, thank you, everybody. Knows what I'm talking about. But, uh, well, you have something that you want to say to me or to someone who is, what is it? Eric is standing up. And his lady is standing up. Yes. Uh, would you like to use a microphone for him? Hey, you came out of that box again. You said before you follow us. It's been a long time coming.
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing to say. It's like they're making another movie and they get to make the movie that they want to make, you know? Yeah. Woo! There you go. I have been in a bunch of other Halloween movies. I've been in tons of other kinds of Halloween movies. So we're all dead. We're all dead. <laughs> Any other questions from the audience? This film in particular out of the franchise meant to me. This was the first Halloween movie that I saw when I was eight years old, and it scared the living shit. Like, I had, uh, I remember a childhood friend Paul, he had it on VHS, and we watched it in a sleepover like four times in a row. And I had recurring nightmares for years. <laughs> and uh, it was always the same one, like I would be in the dream until my, my mom and I get up get prepared because he's coming, he's coming. And, um, and um, yeah, I just, and then probably around 13 or 14, I started to fall in love with the franchise. And this, mo this movie like, was one of the first horror movies that got to my soul. I love it so much. Um, so that's all I have to say. Just thank you for all for being here. And there's no lights. 
she goes down the hall and she comes to the door and she looks in and everything's quiet and the kids are quiet but they're in the middle of the room on this table with this stuff down and this mechanical animal and, and then we see from her from Michael Myers' point of view through the slats in the closet as she comes toward the she comes toward the table and she's just waiting for him to jump out and comes toward the table and she turns off the mechanical Really, and the sound stops, and it's quiet for a second, and you're like, oh my god, oh my god. And she turns and walks away. And everybody goes, oh. <laughs> and, and uh, it didn't make a cut. And I was disappointed in that because I thought, you know, here's a different scene from uh, what you're expecting. It sort of plays with your expectations, and it also keeps you off balance because up until then, every time we saw Michael Myers, somebody died, here was an interesting situation. What did it mean that he didn't kill somebody? Was it because of the children? Was it because, you know, it had a lot going on, I thought. But it's just one of those things that doesn't always, you know, doesn't always make the cut. Uh, and, and then, it, unfortunately, that's the one scene when, you know, we were able to put stuff back. That scene, I don't know, that scene is gone. So it's too bad because I really like that scene. But it happened. Okay, question back here. I'd like to echo something of what Rick just said. Because we were talking about it earlier, it was, I feel very sad that that, that scene was gone because it actually set up the scene with, with Bud later. Whereas, I mean, if you had that scene in and nothing disastrous happened, you think the same thing is going to happen when she goes into the room with Bud, and then of course it's just Bud. But it just was a, it was what I was sort of alluding to before. Um, the the character-driven way that Rick puts things together and the way he builds suspense. And that was one of the scenes. So sorry I didn't make the comment. Okay, question all the way down here. Hello, my name is George. I'm from Orlando. I'm a bunch of Travis here. I got my baby, my little boy Michael. And we came here five years ago for the 35 Weeks of Terror. We loved it so much, so we decided to come back. And I want to say thank you guys, because you guys are the reason, and Michael Myers is the reason that we moved to Pasadena for two years. <laughs> so it was an amazing time. Um, there was one night I was walking in the dark alley where Big Warlock had a dog barking, and I had a big dog barking at me at a late night. <laughs> But my question is, guys, um, were you guys, I was watching the DVD features, and you guys were frustrated because there was an airplane passing by every few minutes when you guys were shooting? How, how bad was it? it? It was so bad that um, in the good weather, there was a plane uh, about every minute and a half. But in the bad weather, it was continuous. And we ended up putting something up on a roof with walkie-talkie so that he could radio us when it looked like there was a gap of like three or four hundred yards that we could try to get to see. I mean, it was hard. And I think if, we, if I had been more experienced, I would have said, look, we're going to end up looping a bunch of this, so let's not frustrate ourselves and, and uh, you know, try to fit in scenes between aircraft landing, and these were big aircraft, and we were right in a flight path. Um, so it, it was it, it was difficult, and it was frustrating, and it was frustrating for the actors. I know Jamie Lee had a really hard time for a while with that, but um, we made it through, and uh, you know, it, it helped to have a sort of flag person to scout up on the roof, literally radioing in, okay, you're clear for 90 seconds. Yes, I'm Barry. I flew away in from Philadelphia to be here, so glad to be here as well. My question actually is this, and this is specifically for Rick, Nancy, Dean, and Adam. The gentleman who's on my shirt is not here with us today, Mr. Donald Pleasance. Some memories of working with him. Thanks. Most of 
<laughs> uh, but uh, he was very professional. I, I remember on the, the original Halloween, um, you know, he was sort of like the, the biggest star because, uh, you know, everyone else was just sort of beginning. But I remember, I think, oh, I saw him in this and I saw him in that. And he would be off to the side when we were setting up, pacing back and forth, talking to himself. But I wondered, uh, you know, is he like really crazy or something? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wandered over to him. He was going over his lines. He was such a pro that even though this was presumably a small movie, he was intent on doing uh, yeah, as good a job as uh, he possibly could. So he was working on his lines all, all constantly. And, uh, and you know, it really impressed me about um, you know, because I, I've worked with other actors who kind of walk onto the set and say, okay, so now where do I stand, what do I say? And he was prepared. Well, I, in addition to being a, a consummate professional, he was very funny in a very dry, subtle way. And on some of my scenes were in the car with him. And so they'd be changing the light or doing something, and Donald would say something hysterical. And of course, I'd be laughing, and then they call for action, and he's putting himself together impeccably, and professionally, and I'm left there trying to pull myself together thinking about how funny he was. So he was, he was just a delight, charming, wry, odd, but, but delightful human being. It was an honor. I honestly was pretty nervous uh, when I first started working with him because you know, it was my first film. He was so experienced, and he was so easy to work with. I mean, he took there was there was very little communication needed. He didn't need to really direct him very much, and he made very subtle adjustments each time. And um, he just I, I was surprised how sort of easy to work with he was. He just seemed. Um, not to, not to need, he, well, he wasn't needy at all as an actor. Um, the image that's so interesting to me is, is in the kind of final scene with him. Uh, I just thought he brought so much into that hospital room from the time he stabbed and the way he falls backwards against the gurney. We were all really scared he was hurt, you know, because the acting was so good. He sort of takes this uh, blade and he falls backwards and he just completely s sort of sold out fell back against the gurney and, you know, and he was a false awkward lady. Uh, I don't know, his whole body kind of changed in that scene and there was a kind of vulnerability he had in there. He was, he was just fascinating to work with and uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Okay. Uh, I think we only have time for one more question and I kind of want to have fun with it, so I'm going to ask everybody on stage, does anyone have a question for one of your co-workers you've always wanted to ask? This is your chance in front of the public audience. <laughs> Now's the time. If they're willing to know anything about the long time, Gloria's done. Go for it. How many times, Lance, did you have to trip and, uh, and, and, and fall into that blood? <laughs> well, um, I only remember the hard part, which was um, uh, falling in the frame because it was in three cuts, and um, I don't know if it was you. It was one of your stunt guys that did the, with the pads and stuff. Or was it you? I can't remember. The, when I fell into the blood, there was a middle cut. That was Diamond Farnsworth. That was Diamond Farnsworth? No way, really? Richard Farnsworth's son. Oh my god, I see that guy in everything. That's so funny. Anyways, so uh, it was three cuts, and I just fell, and um, I landed on a mattress, and then Diamond did the actual fall, and then my head fell in a frame, but I, I hit uh, what felt like solid concrete, and I think it was a piece of masonite underneath it, so it wasn't actually solid concrete, but I was 20 years old going like, yeah, I can do the yeah, sure, let me just fall, I'll just <laughs> <laughs> And I literally, like, my head just it was like getting hit by a baseball bat, you know, I was like, and Rich would say, hey, Rich, you okay, you're right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
do it again. I think we did it. Tw I think we did it twice, but but uh, I think I only remember falling down with my head twice. Thankfully, I jeez. And I have another point for my brain. They went to lunch and left me on the gurney because I couldn't step in the blood. So everyone left, <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, I can't believe this. I thought it was funny. <laughs> 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 All right, we're out of time right now, but thank you to everybody for calling.